It's my feeling that he's talking about rocks. If he wasn't talking about rocks, he's talking about stony hearts of the Gentile world that didn't know a thing about praising God. I do know this much. When Israel failed to fulfill what God would have them do, he turned to a people who was not a people and made them his chosen people. I'm glad I can raise my head high tonight and say I'm one of God's chosen people. You say, but you're not an Israeli, not on the outside, but on the inside. Hallelujah, I've been born again and grafted in. Y'all don't feel as good as I do tonight? I've been born again and grafted in. Hallelujah. I've got something to be happy about because I'm a child of the King. I've taken on me a name that's above every name. You say the name of Jesus, I'm ready to get in on the blessing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Will a man rob God? Now, do you think God would have us have real spiritual services, you know, filled with praises, filled with glory? Now, some people cause worship dancing only. I listened to a tape the other day. The preacher evidently was talking about dancing, and, and, and he called that worship, and, 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 I, and people do worship while they're dancing unto the Lord. So I'm not going to criticize that altogether, but that's not the only way to worship God. I'd like to see, was it Wednesday night that everybody got up, had to pucker up and cry just a little bit? A tenderness moved into this service? God loves these tears. God loves praises. You know something? A, a praise that I have to ask for is not worth very much. And I do it a lot of times. I'm really trying to get your attention, but I'll say, praise the Lord, everyone. Everybody say praise the Lord. Everybody raise your hands. Everybody clap your hands. We're trying to get somebody to wake up and really worship God from our way down here, from our down inside, love Him and praise Him. Now, if we don't praise Him, we're robbing God because He's going to have praises. If one people, have you seen a, a church, maybe it was for years in existence, and, and it went on and on and on, but it got to a place that it wasn't, uh, we could say, lively. It's bigger than lively. It's bigger than lively. I guess you could go to the Grand Ole Opry or Hee Haw and find some fun and some liveliness. But uh, you know I'm not talking about those things. It's bigger than just singing. It's when God gets in the song, sometimes we'll say, sing it again. Because the first time they sung it, there wasn't much going on. But the second time they begin to sing it, the glory of the Lord come down, and we begin to feel the presence of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's don't rob him of praises. We would be just as guilty of withholding our praises as we would be of withholding our tithing. Amen. Somehow I don't like for people to say, and, and many people say it, and they don't mean what they're saying, I guess, but they say, I'm going to come and pay you my tithe. Now, I think the minister stands at the head of the, car, of the church, and, and he should be a good administrator and know what to do with them and all that. Uh, but at the same time, I don't like for you to look like or think like you are tithing unto Rutledge. I'd like for you to think tithing unto the Lord. It's the same way about praising. You know, sometimes we get a singing group, and my, how we'll clap and cheer, but are we clapping unto the Lord, or are we praising the singers that, that might be blessing us in a shallow-like way by responding to their song, responding to their singing, and we get all excited, but somewhere, somewhere in the shadows you'll find Jesus just waiting on somebody to love him and to praise him. If you haven't told him lately that you love him, tell him you love him. God's going to have somebody somewhere that tells him very frequently that they love the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Yeah. Bumper stickers, it says, have you hugged your children today? And I uh, saw one that said, have you hugged your dog today? <laughs> oh, what love. Well, they pay attention. Well, even animals can get, uh, they can get on your sympathy. We had one come to our house this, this week, a little cat that someone had dropped evidently, and, and it was outside begging to come inside. Wow! Yeah. I said, what is that? And Sister Rose said, I don't know. And she looked out, and when she opened the door, this cat stuck his head in trying. That's dangerous to stick your head in my house. You're liable to shut the door on him. But uh, it just insisted on coming in. She felt sorry for it, wanted to get it a piece of bread. It didn't want bread. It wanted to come in the house. 
And Sister Floyd come to see us, and uh, she couldn't hardly get in the house for that cat in the way. And Sister Rutledge and Sister Floyd gave the cat to a black girl. <laughs> so they'd probably give our neighbor's cat away. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> but uh, 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 cats, uh, dogs demand attention and demand love. I went outside, and that cat come up to me and put his head on my trouser leg and just uh, begged me to take it in the, in the house. Now, I learned to quit fooling with cats. My neighbor had a cat two or three years ago, and I, I called it uh, Felix. <laughs> he'd get out and catch mice, and he'd come across my yard walking and looking at me like it's like, look what I've got, a rat. <laughs> and one day I went out, I'd always pet it, and uh, sometimes I'd rub him the wrong way because Brother Gamlin said uh, sometimes his preaching rubbed people the wrong way. He said, like the cat he was rubbing, and he was rubbing that cat, was saying, wow! <laughs> and someone said, hey, you, you, you're rubbing that cat the wrong way, and he said, bless God, if the cat don't like it, he can turn around. <laughs> of course, that's what he said about his preaching. If you don't like our preaching, if you don't like our praise, if you don't like our worship, if you don't like our hand clapping, well, turn around. Praise God. God is good. Well, I, I rubbed old Felix, and I'd play with him, and we had a good time together. But one day I went out, and I rubbed him, and he bit me. Right there on both sides, his teeth went into my finger, and, uh, oh, it hurt. Blood run, and I... I prayed for myself and, and cried, not cried literally, but you know, and just took on. And uh, a day or two later, I went out in the yard and old Felix is dead. <laughs> you thought the cat hurt me, what'd I do to the cat? But you know what, I got thinking a week or so, I thought, what if that thing had hydrophobia? <laughs> What'd you say, John? I'm preaching healing, and you're saying you'd die. Oh, no. But I'll admit to you, every few days I'd think, maybe I ought to go and got me some shots or sent that the fellow's head off or something to see, see what is wrong. But I made it this far, and that's been three or four years ago. I think I'm safe now, so if I bite any of you, don't get too worried, all right? God's going to have praises. Look, that cat just... Uh, bosomed up, if that's the right word, to Sister Rogers, myself, and to Sister Rogers, and to that little black girl, wanting to go home with someone, and she got her way. She got her desire. God has done so much for us, and He wants praises. Oh, He healed us when we were sick. He saved us when we were lost. Did you get it on the salvation plan? Hallelujah. God said, Come down, Zacchaeus. I want to go home with you. He stopped us in our busy schedule and said, I want, I want to go home with you. I want to be your guest today. I want to be your God. I want to be your healer. I want to be your Savior. I want to, I want to bless you. Hallelujah. Everybody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, if we'd say that just right, these walls would tremble under their prayer. I'm not talking about vibration. I'm talking about if we'd honor God as God deserves to be honored. If we would, but somehow maybe we're just a little bit guilty of holding out. A Jewish man that I worked for years ago said, uh, Marvin, how, how do you pay for that building? I was in East St. Louis. How, how do you take care of your expenses? And I said, well, our people tithe and give offerings. He said, they do what? And I said, well, Mr. Spisman, you should know what tithing is. He said, what do you mean? I said, that's 10% of your increase. He said, do they really do it? And I said, yes, sir. Most of our people, absolutely. In fact, most of our people give more than tithing. Let me tell you that right now. We've got a group of people right here that give far more than tithing. They tithe and they give to the building fund and they give to evangelists and they give to other things that come by. And if you would calculate, it would probably run 15% of their income, more than 10%. But uh, he said, you really mean that? And I said, sure, I mean it. And he said, don't you think maybe some of them hold out on the old man? <laughs> <laughs> 